long, long day. Uh, I am the last one. So I know you all gonna be tired. Um, so thank you for being here. And um, let's, uh, let's thank the organizers for a great day, okay? So thank you uh, to the organizer. Uh, come on, yeah. So, um, yeah, so you want, a, you want to have a remote job, right? But uh, there, there are trends and remote jobs are changing all the time. And people don't even know what remote, job, remote jobs are anymore. And um, so I want to go over a little bit of the history of remote working. And so go over the late 90s and the 2000s, 2010s, which is today and see what the future will bring, because I think it's very, very interesting for you. Uh, so, a, a quick um, introduction about myself. Uh, so my name is Marco Cecconi, I'm an engineering manager at Toptal. Toptal is a company that uh, promotes remote work. So what we do is we vet the best talent, and we vet the best companies, and we put them together. So um, skilled engineers or skilled designers or finance experts uh, can work remotely for companies uh, all over the world. And previously, I was also doing a remote job at Stack Overflow as a developer. And that is my uh, Twitter handle if you want to follow me, so that would be great. So let's start from, from the very origins, right? The 90s, the PS2 era. Uh, so who had the PS2 here? Yeah, not not anyone anymore. <laughs> okay, so uh, how how was was remote job? Uh, what what was remote working then? Well, there wasn't much, right? So your choices were uh, you could be in an office if you were lucky, just five or six people, or you could be in the doom cubicles that everybody hated, or if you were super lucky, you could get a crappy desk in the corner, well, a private office. So um, what about remote workers? Well, there weren't remote workers. There was working from home. So you could ask, please, please, can I work from home? Uh, and everybody thought that's what you were doing. You know, slacking off on the old day. And w when you did that, and the tools were these ones, right? Calls on a crappy Motorola phone, and that was your Dell laptop, it was really bad. And all this, you know, oh, I need to connect, or let me put in the key and, and make everything work, and it worked half the time. So even the tools were not great, right? If you remember uh, WebEx and Outlook. And, 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 and how, how, uh, how, how did the companies work, right? So most companies were using Waterfall. And so maybe a few, a few were starting to do uh, extreme programming. But most companies were still very, very old-fashioned in the way they work. And you, 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 you would work for these companies and you would stay there 10 years. Like you go there and you're married to the company and you know, if you got a great job, yay! If you got a bad job, <laughs> So, yeah, not great. So, um, what happened afterwards, right? So this happened, right? This was the changing uh, instrument of change, uh, the, the innovation, like fast internet. And together with that, there were other important enablers, right? Enablers that allowed companies to work differently. Uh, blogging, and that means it sounds like stupid today, right? But hey, with blogs, you were actually able to look up the resources you needed, right? You didn't have to have a library at home, which you didn't have, of course. And webcams, uh, so the first webcams appeared and you could have really bad conversations with them. And, and the first so social networks. So again, allowing people to keep in touch. So what this, what this lead us to? So the PlayStation 3 for one, uh, but also, let's see, okay, so um, more, the first company started to have uh, a so-called remote first culture. What does that mean? It means that uh, the company must still has a traditional uh, office where you go and do your job, 
or optionally, you can be a remote worker, be in another uh, town, in another country, in another continent. And uh, the company is structured, so uh, remote, uh, remote uh, way of working comes first. What that means is that all, say, all the meetings happen online and not, don't happen offline. Uh, what happens is uh, that remote workers are not considered working from home. They're normal workers. And as you can see, SAC has changed. For example, SAC Overflow was one of the first companies to embrace this. And they have private offices, but also, of course, um, of course, work from, uh, work from home setups, so home offices. And this is the rise, uh, so the, the rise of the myth of the 10x developer, right? So what happens is you say, oh, okay, I'm working from home. I have everything set up the way I want it. I'm gonna be more productive. Nobody bothers me, uh, I'm like Superman. And um, other stuff, let's see, uh, computers, right? You didn't, you, you don't, when you work from home, you don't work from home on a crappy, uh, <laughs> on a crappy Dell Precision, right? You build your own super mega rig with five monitors and, and computers and everything. The tools of the trade have become a little bit better, like the first chats, like HipChat, and, and also, of course, Skype, which is like a million times better than, than the previous uh, web access things. And of course, Google Docs, and it sounds stupid, but going from, Google, from Microsoft Office to, uh, to Google Docs, this is, again, a remote first kind of office where people can collaborate, can type at the same time on the same document and so on. It was revolutionary at the time. And of course, you know, the way we work changed and um, at the same time, uh, a lot more and more companies started to embrace Scrum and, and Agile. And mysteriously, uh, the job, typical job tenure started to go down. And the reason is, again, that the more connected we are, the more people have opportunities. And of course, they can change and, and they can take different jobs. And people started having more and more, uh, more and more uh, remote jobs then. And of course, what happened then? Uh, what happened then is that, well, mobiles came out, right? Like mobile uh, iPhones and uh, other smartphones, which changed the game again. And other, other technologies also came out, like uh, social media became pervasive, right? So you're always on, always connected, always, uh, uh, always reachable. And uh, next generation cloud tools appeared, right? So before, it was like, oh, maybe you have a server somewhere. Nowadays, it's everywhere. There is like Amazon or Google Cloud or whatever, Microsoft Azure, and everything is, uh, is hosted there. So you don't really need a data center anymore. There are very few companies that do that. And conferencing tools started to become better and better. Typically, uh, you started to have mm, tools like Zoom and tools like uh, Google Hangouts that actually allow you to go over uh, the limit of one a conversation with only two people, right? Because Skype, yes, nowadays perhaps you can do conversation with more than more than two people, but you cannot do probably 10 or 100 or 500. And with this with these tools, you actually can. So you can actually run a company completely remotely, and which is what happens, you know, in the, in this decade. And um, Toptal, the company I work for, is a fully remote company. We don't have offices. Uh, everybody is remote, and if you want to meet uh, online or together, there are hundreds of people that need to be in the same call. And, and that happens. And of course, all the tools are, are much better. And uh, like there is GitHub, for example, you don't need to uh, use some crappy like uh, SVN share thing. Uh, there are so many, so many tools that allow uh, working at a distance for, for everyone. And, and this is totally possible today. And this has changed the way, the way we work, right? If, if uh, in the 90s, and if for as long as we can remember, you're bound to your place of work, uh, you cannot go anywhere, and you need to be in a city, for example, in London, 
or New York if you want to be in the best places. And uh, nowadays, with remote first company, sorry, completely remote companies, they can get talent from wherever they want. And, uh, and therefore, it's a great opportunity for the people and a great opportunity for the companies. And it created new ways of working, like for example, this one. And believe it or not, this looks like a publicity shot, but it isn't. Uh, these are actual developers, uh, actually developing uh, on a cruise. And uh, it's organized for uh, so-called digital nomads. Uh, who of you have heard of digital nomadism? It's yeah, just a few, but I can assure you it's something that exists. Uh, if you work remotely for a company, uh, you don't really have to be bound to a, to a country. And you can, you can go, say, two months in Thailand or three months in Japan and then maybe go in the US as long as you, know, you can do it for cheap enough, which with Airbnb is totally possible. And you have an internet connection, nobody cares. And, and you can do that. And there are a lot of people that do that. In fact, there are companies that uh, you pay them so and so every month and they, sh they move you around the world like every two months. So you go around the world around the world continuously. Another way uh, of working that emerged that maybe you're more familiar with is um, working from cafes, right? And again, this looks like a publicity of a cafe, but it's a very famous cafe in Berlin where uh, Sun Cloud was born. And Sun Cloud was born like that, you know, people without even an office, they just went to a cafe and started working together there and, and they created a, a very billion dollar company. And uh, of course the tools are becoming different, right? So you have like uh, nowadays everybody has uh, MacBook Pros or very thin laptops and that's all you need. And, and of course you have uh, mobile telephones of next generation which are super powerful. And what you can do with this stuff, which is what I'm doing today, uh, you can go anywhere and, and work. I've been working the whole of the whole of today, remotely, uh, r remotely from my home, um, from my home office as well, uh, without any problem. And this is becoming increasingly common, and companies really don't have a problem anymore allowing this kind of th this kind of work. And again, the, the new tool, the new tools have emerged, right? So. You have Slack, for example, for conversation that is integrated with everything and it's become the central n nervous system of companies, uh, remote or not. Uh, Zoom, as I was saying, that allows you to have conversations with uh, hundreds of people at the same time, so casting as well as well uh, ha having meetings. And of course, GitHub uh, to, to do source, uh, source code development together. Um, Trello is another tool for, uh, for, for of course, uh, collaboration, and is also uh, a tool which is revolutionizing again Agile because we went from old uh, 2000s um, kind of stuffy tools which had a million forms, a million things to fill in, in every day in order to change your status and plan your thing to a much more lean much more Kanban-like uh, interface between product and, uh, and development, uh, which is, for example, offered by Trello, in which you have just a list of things to do and you move them along, and that's how you track your work. So much more simple. And again, job tenure is still going down. Again, more availability, more, you know, you're less bound to a company because, for example, let's say, um, you, you live in Milan, Italy, and there are only so many companies that can interest you and w where you can work, right? So you, when you find a good one, you stay there. And the less you're bound to, to the place, but you, you, know, you, you don't need to move from Milan to get another job because you can get it remotely, you know, maybe you change more often. Moving on, so what are, what are let's, let's try to predict the future a bit, right? So what are the next technologies that are gonna change everything again? And, uh, and again, I'm just guessing here, so don't be upset if you don't agree. Uh, so <laughs> this is a really bad picture um, of something that is very common nowadays, which is machine learning. Uh, machine learning is uh, is going to be a huge game game changer for 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 jobs in the next few years. 
in other technologies are personal robotics, which is something which is probably starting to pick up now. Um, what is it? Well, if you, if you think uh, a personal computer is a computer that you, you can have home, and maybe you can do even uh, personal electronics with Arduino, you can do personal robotics when, when you have the basic building blocks of building robots and automated movement parts uh, within your graph, so you can play with them and, and, and create new things. 3D printing, of course, is, is being uh, increasingly, increasingly common everywhere. And where I live, you can go to the museum, they, they give you a 3D printing course, course and, and you can start to pr 3D print your stuff. You can, uh, nowadays, you can easily design something and send it to a 3D print shop and get it shipped back to you in no time. And, um, and the last bit is uh, pervasive APIs. And again, this is something that is happening, starting to happen right now, in which everything has an API. Right, so as companies become more and more and more technological, they start to expose APIs for everything. And then you can use API to integrate your workflows and you can automate stuff out of other people. So what will be the effect of this? Let's see, the 2020s. So again, apologies, I, I tend to be a very factual person. I like to measure everything, I like to think in terms of facts, but this is just made up. Um, but I think it's very realistic, okay? So hear me out. Okay, so um, first concept, and here I'm gonna bore you to death. No, I'm not really gonna bore you to death at all. Um, so let's categorize the jobs uh, between subjective and objective, between manual and uh, cognitive. So what does it mean, for example, if you're if you're a mason and you build you know houses, uh, you do a manual labor, and for most part, the outcome of your job is very objective. Either you have a house or you don't have a house. Either the wall goes up straight or it doesn't. And uh, if you're a software developer, instead your 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 job is way more cognitive. You don't build anything. You don't use your muscles. And, but the output, again, is fairly objective, right? So you have tests, for example, that tell you whether your software works or not. Um, but you, know, you can be a sculptor, right? If you're a sculptor, you're going to, you're going to do manual work, but there is a, also a lot of subjectivity in what you do, right? You're building a beautiful statue, who decides wh what is beautiful and what isn't? It's subjective and so on, poets, cognitive and uh, subjective and so on. So why am, am I doing this? I'm doing this because it's important to understand that not all jobs right now can become remote. Like for example, a, a, a Mason cannot do his job remotely. How can he, right? He needs to build a, a wall, so it requires personal presence, so you not can, not can do. And if you are like a poet or this kind of, maybe you can be remote, but it's really hard to scale this kind of jobs, right? You cannot, you, you have one poet every 100,000 people. And <laughs> this objective stuff, which is also manual, uh, again, hard to scale and requires personal presence, so nothing to do. And again, here, machine learning, right? Jobs which are, uh, objective and cognitive in the next 10 years are gonna go away, right? They're gonna be automated away because computers can do them, they are objective, right? So you can train some, uh, some machine learning algorithm to do the job better than humans. For example, diagnostic, as I was saying, um, as it is today, is probably going to go away because we can probably get better results by sending all the, all the data uh, about a patient to an algorithm and, and, and we can get more accurate results than just trusting a physician. Right, so what's left is like this green area here which are like remotable job. Yeah, this is what is happening 
nowadays, more or less. But a job that is, uh, that is in, in placed somewhere on this scale can move around based on forces. And let me give an example of music. So music, uh, for the longest period, uh, it was always manual. Like you would have maybe great composers, uh, but they, you know, there would be no way of recording music. So until the 1800s, it would be totally manual, not remotable, and totally subjective, right? So who, you like uh, this kind of music? Fine, if you don't like it, fine. Um, then what happened? Yeah, the gramophone came out, like the and records came out, so you could record your music. And what, what that meant was that first of all, people needed to do less work, right? Because you record your music once and then people can listen to it. But also the fact that you can replicate your music means that you start to become a little bit more objective. Uh, you know, there is a, a way to, um, to, to, to measure music which was not available before, which was listen to this record. If you like it or not, a lot of people can, can listen to it. And then, uh, you know, this, the, the direct consequence of this and, you know, of large and of mass media, of course, was rock stars and pop stars, right? So the Beatles came out and they were like the masters of let's sell as much as possible. So maximizing this quality, and uh, of course, music got a little less subjective because if you sell 50 million records, that's a pretty big indication that you know what you're doing. And again, less and less manual. The amount of work done was less and less. For example, the Beatles at some point decided, okay, it's not worth it for us to do live concerts anymore, just print, print albums. And then uh, the next step, again, with music was uh, the advent of synths, right? The, the 70s, the 80s. And so even when you recorded music, you didn't really need to know how to play pretty much. You can sequence, sequence it. You don't need to have great ability in uh, having the best instruments and so on because, hey, synths just work and they can be programmed and they work all the time and they can play whatever you want. So again, music, at that point becomes way less manual. Uh, in fact, MIDI files, right? And then, uh, next step again, uh, home audio. And this is in the 2000s. So home audio came, came in and now it's super cheap to, to produce any form of music. You don't need almost even to be able to sing nowadays. You can be auto-tune yourself and computer is gonna do 90% of the work. So is gone from something which was totally uh, subjective and manual to nowadays something which is way less objective and, and basically purely cognitive. So, and this kind of stuff happens all the time, right? So let's see what, what, what the effects of, of these technologies, which I've said, are going to be on jobs, right? So 3D printing and robotics, what are they going to do, right? Well, they're gonna take away a lot of manual work. Right, so if you want to, if you are a sculptor, you know, you can, yes, you use your chisel and your hammer, or you can 3D print your sculpture. So it's much easier to do that. And uh, robotics, of course, allows maybe a surgeon to, to work at a distance. So again, less remote, uh, l less, less manual work. And so, their effect is to push stuff. And it's also pushing stuff towards being a little bit more objective because if you are sculpting by hand, you sort of you know, look at it. And instead, if you, if you are 3D printing something, you have to think about it and you have to precisely define what you're doing. So be a little bit more objective in what you do. Machine learning, better icon there, again, is up there in that corner, is eating away all those jobs. <laughs> and uh, what it's doing in reality is making a lot of, uh, a lot of space and, and pushing a lot of jobs to be uh, more subjective. And the example is the example of the doctor. And 
a, a doctor right now, a, a diagnostician, what, what are they doing, right? So they are taking tests, they're looking them up, they have tables and studies that tell them, okay, with this is, with these symptoms, probably is this disease. And, and that's great. And that can be automated by an algorithm, by machine learning, probably better than them. But what they are going to do then, they are going to take care of the aspects of uh, being a doctor, which cannot be automated. Like for example, <coughs> being, you know, talking to people, you know, not being cold or trying to understand the, emotion, the emotional part of a disease, which is usually quite important or trying to understand uh, the ethical concerns of, uh, of medicines, which are, which are again great and a patient by patient kind of thing. So the job of a doctor is gonna be a doctor 2.0 if you want, which is gonna be more cognitive and uh, more subjective, more using best judgment and less using, uh, less trying to see the objective bits which are going to be given by machine learning. And uh, another thing uh, that goes together is with machine learning is uh, generative machine learning and uh, GANs, GANs, uh, generative uh, adversarial networks. Are you familiar with that, with this concept? Who, who knows about this? One person. <laughs> okay, so it's a cool, a really cool idea. So what, what, do, what do people do? You know, machine learning is really great at doing one thing. You take it, you give it a, a bunch of input, like a million different sensors and things, and then it crunches them, and then it classifies the output. And it says, this is an orange, or this is a pineapple. Um, which is great. But what is not able to do yet, is to generate content. So generate a picture of an apple or generate a picture of, of an orange, right? Strange because, because, because these networks know everything about apples and oranges, right? They can categorize them better than anybody else. So the idea of generating these uh, guns, what are they? Well, they are inverse, uh, inverse machine learning machines. They generate random stuff garbage initially and um, and then they try to fool uh, a machine a fully learned machine learning algorithm so they, they, they do random stuff and then they train themselves to cheat and become better than a fully trained machine learning algorithm to create to distinguish oranges and apples right so if you have this apple distinguisher you create this and you train it so it can fool the distinguisher uh, into thinking that the, the random thing you generated is better than, better <laughs> is an apple or an orange. For example, this is an example, uh, very small over there. And uh, that's a generative network that uh, takes the drawing of, 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 a, of a bag and generates a picture of a bag. So that bag on the right is not real. So again, these tools that are coming, out, coming around again, uh, what will they do? Well, again, you know, the alternat what's the alternative there? If we don't have these networks, you need to paint it with your hands and fill it in. So we're gonna take away manual labor and make it more cognitive. So the fun thing here is that if you look, more or less all of these arrows points toward our green area. So remotable jobs are gonna go through the roof, right? So we started with this, with, with this example, right? All, all these blue dots on, 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 this, on this quadrant. But this is what we are, gonna, we are gonna end up with, right? So my prediction is that, for example, from architecture, you will go to personal architecture. What is that? Personal architecture is, you know, you draw in, in some software, you, you draw your house, and then there is a machine that builds your house. Uh, 3D sculpture, again, uh, you program something, you send it off, and someone builds it for you with a machine and gives you the object, you, your sculpture created without uh, using your hands. Uh, generative poetry, that is, uh, 
still controversial. I, I tried to look for examples, but they're really bad. So I don't know. Um, software is going to stay more or less as it is, but it's going to be much, way more jobs for software developers because everything is software when it's cognitive, right? Diagnostics 2.0, that's what I was, uh, that was, I was telling you, that's what I was suggesting. Accountancy again, um, it's going to be something different, so I don't know what it's going to be. Um, more changes in coming. Uh, if, you know, if the more remote jobs are there, the less reason there is to have cities with millions and millions of people and aggregations in offices of people that doesn't matter anymore. So people will be more, more concentrated on time zones than in cities, right? Because people still need to work at the same time. Um, again, the, the, the range of jobs is going to be unthinkable. Right? If you look at the jobs that can be remote today, and then you think all the people that can't be remote today, that's not going to happen. A lot of people are going to be working remotely. It's going to be the most uh, common way of working. And again, other things, right? Uh, technology will evolve, so it can support this. So more movement to the, cl to the cloud. You won't need to store your data. Everything will be centralized in some government computer, probably. <laughs> Uh, open source development is the quintessential force here. Uh, it's the first thing that started to be collaborative and remote in the 80s or 70s even, I don't know. But a long time ago, and, and it's going to become king, right? It's going to become the, the way of, of developing software. Nowadays, it's getting there. Uh, Post-agile. Uh, Agile doesn't work really well anymore in distributed teams, in fully distributed teams. You can do it, but a lot, a lot of things which are based on the fact that you have meetings and that, that you uh, do stand-ups together every day at the same time. There is no concept of the same time in a remote team. You know, the morning for me is the afternoon for someone else. So it becomes a, a little bit uh, different, and I think we will go towards a more loose way of work. And, and the typical job tenure is going to go down again, right? It's going to be, become more of an opportunity uh, eco a, a economy where you have 10,000 companies that want your time, you know, because you are a skills culture, 3D sculpture, and, you know, you can do that really well. Hey, now you can sell to a, a lot of people, not just the people that you can uh, serve by, 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 by chiseling, and you can sell to serve to everybody in the in the world really right so uh, you're going to have more customers and work less time for each and so that's it but before you think that i'm i'm just making this stuff up i i did look up on some examples of the stuff i was proposing so this this is a 3d sculpture uh, by an artist called uh Bruegel. And it, it has been it has been uh, 3D printed in steel, and then and then he, he created I think something like 20 or, or 200 I don't remember copies, and then he customizes each one so he paints one blue and another one makes it different and so on. So again, people are already doing this and leveraging technology to do art. Other example. Believe it or not, this house has been 3D printed. And there is this, I don't know how it, it, it looks like, like a normal 3D printer. And it has got this huge tube with, from which concrete comes down and just goes in and, and he builds it. In, in four hours, I think. These two people, who knows who they are? Nobody? You know why you don't know who they are? Because they don't exist. These, these are generative um, idols. Like they, they, they train some networks to look at the picture of like famous actors and famous people, and then they, they train a network to generate them. And these are two examples of people coming out of them. They, they look like people, right? Well done. So yeah, that's it. That's uh, that's what my talk is about. So. Uh, I hope that I have inspired you a bit, at least to think about this, and even if you disagree with me. And remember that if you want to step into the world of uh, remote work, 
there's no better place than TopTal, which is the company I work for, that is specialized in making companies acquire remote talent when they are not sure how to do it, and and we specialize also on making people that have never worked remotely start to work remotely for a very big company and have a great time. So thank you very much. <laughs>